right. Happy yeah. Sabbath, everyone. Um, we didn't have special features today like we usually do, so this is a slightly amended service. But I will read a few pertinent announcements, and then uh, we can start the service. Uh, there's not a lot here, but just to uh, remember uh, Cerrito and her family, uh, they've had a hard struggle with losing their everything, I guess. So it's nice if uh, we can continue helping them as a church. Uh, uh, they just wanted to, uh, and in the bulletin it, it points that out. And then um, the SDA Family Assistance Fund is just one of the ways you can help support that. And uh, so if you need more information, uh, uh, Leah would be the real good person to talk to about that. And then there's a SEEDS conference coming up in January 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. So if you are interested in such things, you certainly can um, uh, go to that. I think it's at Central Church. And then finally, uh, the Sanctuary Renewal Project. We're still trying to get enough money to redo these benches so they don't have... Uh, potholes in them and uh, so I hope if you have any extra money that you want to donate you could certainly that would be a good cause but uh, we're ready for our song service and uh, and then we will uh, start our our uh, program Happy Sabbath to you all. There's a quote that I would like to read this morning before we start. This is from Signs of the Times, January 2nd, 1901. The old year with its burden of record is fast passing away. The new year with all its possibilities, will soon be ushered in. What advancement have we made in the knowledge of Christ during the past year? Are we prepared to show more decidedly than ever before that we are on the Lord's side? At this time, when the nations of the world are wavering between infidelity and idolatry, are we prepared to stand as faithful ambassadors for Christ? Shall we not, at the beginning of this, this new year, give ourselves and all we have to God? Shall we not listen to his voice, which calls us to a renewed contest, to a more thorough consecration of ourselves and our entrusted capabilities to his service? There are two songs I chose this morning uh, under consecration in the hymnal. And I couldn't find one of the background of the songs, but I have one that we are going to sing first. Justin W. Van Deventer was raised in a Christian home. At age 17, he accepted Jesus as his savior. He graduated university with a degree in art and was employed successfully as a teacher and an administrator of high school art. He traveled extensively, visiting the various art galleries throughout Europe. Van Deventer also studied and taught music. He mastered 13 different instruments, sang and composed music. He was very involved in the music ministry of his Methodist Episcopal Church and eventually found himself torn between his successful teaching career and his desire to be a part of an evangelistic team. This struggle within himself lasted for almost five years. In 1896, Van Deventer was conducting the music of a church event. 
It was during these meetings that he finally surrendered his desires completely to God. He made the decision to become a full-time evangelist. As he submitted completely to the will of his Lord, a song was born in his heart. I Surrender, Surrender All was put to music by Winfield S. Whedon, who published this and many other hymns in several volumes. Whedon so loved this song that the words I Surrender All were put on his tombstone. The words and melody of I Surrender All have appeared in virtually every English hymnal and are just as readily sung in churches that prefer contemporary music. Probably this was written uh, long ago. Okay, we are going to sing hymn number 309, I Surrender All. Jesus, I surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily. Number 310, I would draw near to Jesus.
constantly trying to serve him, safe and secure at his side. I will draw nearer to Jesus, I will draw nearer to him, fully surrender each moment, I will draw nearer to him, I will draw nearer to Jesus, nothing withholding from him, knowing his love to be gracious, I would draw nearer to him, I would draw nearer to Jesus, I would draw nearer to him, fully surrender each moment, I would draw nearer to him, I would draw nearer to Jesus, seeking his strength to be true. Willing to tell of his goodness, gladly is blessed with to do. I would draw nearer to Jesus, I would draw nearer to him, fully surrender each moment. I would draw nearer. Please all stand to sing our introit number one, Praise to the Lord. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Father and Lord and Savior of us all, I ask for your presence to be with you, with us today, and I pray for the uh, blessing upon all of us in Jesus' name, Amen. And while you remain standing, we will sing our first song, which is uh, number eleven, "The God of Abraham and Praise."
be seated. Our scripture reading today is from 1 Corinthians 10, verse 11. That's 1 Corinthians 10, verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. All right, if you will now kneel with me in prayer, we will entreat the Lord. Dear Father, I thank you so much that you've brought us here together today. We thank you for what Christ has done by dying on the cross and being so self selfless. And I pray for uh, the Holy Spirit to come down upon all of us that we can be infilled with his grace and his love and have the fruits of the Spirit. And we want to pray for uh, Cerrito and her family as they've gone through this flood and that, they will, that you will help them uh, regain some of the things they've lost, and then be with those who are sick and who are struggling with illnesses, and, that, and we just pray for your healing upon them today as Christ healed so many years ago. And we want to thank you again for the reconciliation that you've brought between heaven and earth, and not only that, but between each other.